and welcome to the fifth episode of Enchanting Economics in New Mexico. This podcast is a production of Bieber, the recognized expert in socioeconomic data for the state of New Mexico. I'm your host, Rayanne McKernan, and today we're continuing on in our series about coronavirus effects on the New Mexico economy. Here with me from Bieber once again is Sarun Lytel, and our special guest today is Matthew Burnaby, the owner of Urban Hot Dog. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me. So for people who aren't familiar with Urban Hot Dog, um, obviously it's a restaurant, but um, can you tell us uh, when you started your first location and um, you know what you've grown into today? Yeah, so uh, you know it's a, a restaurant, of course, and the, the focus of it is gourmet hot dogs. Um, it was opened up in 2012 kind of in the middle of where the gourmet burger trend was here in New Mexico. And the idea behind it, of course, was, you know, the unique selling proposition of doing something a little bit different um, and enticing people with gourmet hot dogs instead of, you know, the burgers or the sandwiches that, uh, you know, a multitude of restaurants have, have opened up and continue to open up with those in mind. But as far as I know, I think we're the only ones in Albuquerque and, and possibly New Mexico doing kind of more an adult take on, on the hot dogs themselves. Um, and so we opened up in 2012. I was actually brought on as the front of house manager and within a month or two took over as the GM and, um, you know, dropped out of UNM, dropped out of college to sell hot dogs, which my family was very excited to hear about. And then from there, um, you know, just kind of fell in love with the brand and the concept and worked out a deal to buy the restaurant from the original owner uh, through some sweat equity and finished up my degree at UNM. And then from then I've grown to two food trucks and another restaurant. That's very impressive. Um, so now obviously we're living in a world where coronavirus has taken over. Um, I'm wondering, are both of your food trucks and both of your restaurants still operating? So I had to shut down one of the restaurants and shut down one of the food trucks. Um, one of the restaurants was more bar based. I, would, I teamed up with Salt Yard here in town, and when they were shut down um, from the governor's, you know, because of the amount of people they had in there, um, you know, it kind of made sense to shut down that restaurant as well. And then my other food truck was partnered with a distillery, and with the decline in business, it just didn't make sense to keep that open. Right. So how how are you guys doing today? How how are you? How are your employees? How are you getting through? Because I'm imagining you're probably working like crazy. Yeah, so it's, you know, back to, you know, essentially living here. Um, you know, I've, I've had to, uh, I haven't had to lay off any staff, which has been, you know, fantastic. I've had some staff volunteer for a little vacation time or time to spend with their family. So, you know, it's been reduced hours, of course, and they are handling it, you know, really well. I'm, I'm here essentially every day trying to maintain and, and figure everything out on my end. You know, there's been lots of challenges trying to, to source product to, you know, let people know that we are still open and we're doing, you know, curbside online ordering. Um, oddly enough, the first week my sales dropped, you know, a, a ton, which was expected. And then the second week, my sales actually increased um, to even higher than what they were before. So my sales increased about 50% um, on the weekdays. And that was due to Grubhub, online ordering, um, you know, just kind of the increased social media presence and the fact that other restaurants in the area closed down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that was actually uh, one of the next questions I was going to ask you is, you know, I'm a mom in her 30s who's on social media all the time you know it seems like we are all trying to you know support our small local businesses especially restaurants and, and i was just wondering if if you have seen any interaction from them are, are you getting any great support from specific groups or or are you offering any specials to try and draw you know more families in since like you said you're, you're clientele and your time period has changed yeah so it's you know it's really been a humbling experience um, you know it's, it's 
it's always been kind of a small mom and pop and I've been the face of the company and you know the one living here you know 80 hours a week for the last seven years so I've you know grown a lot of personal relationships and as soon as this started I started you know some regulars started to come in and they were offering to buy the gift cards you know they took me aside and said if I needed any personal assistance or any loans or anything that they were there for me because they didn't want to see me or the restaurant or my staff fail um, you know and it definitely you know brought some some tears to my eye because you don't you know, throughout each day, you don't really realize what sort of impact you have. Sometimes you just think you're selling food. Um, but really, the restaurant and the hospitality industry is really about those personal connections. So, you know, it was a, it was a good response um, and really humbling to begin with. And when I found out that, you know, there are some schools in the area shutting down and we're going through that process, um, I started to offer free meals for kids as well. So, and that's still going on, of course. So, if anyone out there, anyone, that listens to your podcast, have any kids or know anyone that's in need during the weekday, offer free meals to uh, to children, anyone that was affected by it through the school, they can come in, get some uh, free dog and some chips. Um, awesome. But it's, it's really been a, a humbling experience in, in seeing the response that we've had. And, you know, the, the support local has really, really grown. Um, you know, it's always been strong in Albuquerque I felt compared to other places when I've traveled and this just kind of reinforced that. That's great. That's that's really great to hear. Um, I'm curious, um, you know, the city of Albuquerque's economic development department has made a major push in um, encouraging small businesses in the community to apply for federal funding and, and just making sure that everyone knows what is and, and isn't available through the SBA and um, and I was just wondering if, if you happen to have seen or heard about any of that um, and then in addition I'm wondering if you did or didn't decide to apply for any funding assistance. Yeah, so I think, you know, the city and, and the state have done a great job at, at making that information available. And, you know, they've been doing a fantastic job with their Facebook Live post, which is, since I'm in the restaurant, getting those notifications saying the governor or the mayor are going um, live is, you know, is, is great because it gives me the opportunity to kind of stop what I'm doing with my neighbor too and hear what they have to say. And through listening to them and a couple of other um programs I'm a part of like the National Restaurant Association they, they you know they let me know about the programs out there so I did apply for the um, uh, PPP program as well as the uh, disaster relief fund as mm -hmm. kind of a stopgap I haven't heard back and been approved for any of those as far as I know yet um, I know a lot of the banks are still trying to figure out what that lending process looks like and if what they're gonna do and if they're gonna do it themselves right yeah. Um, was was the process so far fairly easy, would you say? Um, if there's anyone that's been debating whether or not to go ahead and put in an application, would you encourage them to or or how do you feel? Yeah. No, I, it was very simple on my end. Um, you know, I, I definitely would recommend that people or businesses, you know, speak with their accountants or an attorney if they have one because there are some um, some questions as to how these funds are going to be dispersed and how scrutinized they're going to be. Um, so, you know, make sure that, you know, you're, you're doing it the right way when you're applying for it. But as far as the process itself, it was very self-explanatory and very easy as, as long as you had the information required. Okay. Um, so the last question I have for you is, is I'm wondering, you know, because of this epi epidemic and, and everything we've been going through, um, do you see any long-lasting effects on the restaurant industry or on your business in particular? So I think it can go a number of ways and I, I've, I've had a lot of conversations and I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts and different people and their thoughts and you know the prevailing thought kind of seems to be that once this you know passes uh, when it passes that people will be clamoring for that human interaction and they will, you know, flock to restaurants, they'll flock to bars. And, you know, I agree with that too, to some extent, but I also think there's, you know, gonna be some hesitation. And, you know, I think there's probably gonna be some some legislation or, or something that comes through that, you know, kind of ensures that the restaurants and the food service industry is doing its part to ensure that 
that things are kept clean and kept safe, which which I think is important. Um, but I think in the short term, we're probably going to see a lot of mom and pop restaurants close down. I've already spoken to a, a number of other restaurant tours um, that I know personally, and they said that they, you know, reopening up a restaurant, especially after something like this, is is a lot of work, and just opening up a restaurant in general. So they're they're worried that they're you know already lost their staff, that they're not going to get them back, and it's going to be starting from square one. So a lot of them are taking seeing this as you know kind of the the nail in the coffin and they don't anticipate reopening uh when and if this you know this whole thing passes Sarun, do you have anything uh can you tell us like by how many times or you know like a rough number what kind of like takeout is increasing at this time, again, I'm sure people are kind of sick of eating the same food they cook at home and want still want variety but can't get out. Yeah, so I would say that my takeout um, initially was anywhere between 5 and 7% of my business. And right now, obviously, the takeout's at 100%. But, you know, to be more specific, the online ordering platforms have probably taken over 70% of my business on top of that which um, you know, sounds great because that's a, a good avenue for the restaurants to kind of increase their sales. But those online delivery services take anywhere between 20 and 30% of, of the total, which is essentially the margins that most restaurants are running on. So even though I'm a lot busier through Grubhub, I'm not necessarily making any more money or seeing a lot of that profit. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have. Um, thank you, Matthew, for your time. Thank you for helping to feed the kids of Albuquerque. I, as a mom, very appreciative of that. Um, and and I hope you continue to um, keep thriving in this crazy time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me, and uh, thanks for everything that you guys are doing. Well, thank you. Um, that wraps it up here for us at Enchanting Economics in New Mexico. Uh, don't forget, you can check us out at Bieber, that's B-B-E-R, dot U-N-M, dot E-D-U, or on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn under at U-N-M Bieber. Thanks again for listening. Stay home, stay healthy, stay safe.